In the field of odd displacement sport bikes, there's really three contenders. You've got the Gixxer 750, of course, now the defunct Triumph 675, and then you've got this, the Ducati. In his haste to get out there and ride, our normally accurate road test editor, Troy, forgot to mention Kawasaki's ZX636 and MV Augusta's F3 in the 675 and 800cc capacities. Now back to you, Troy. And then you've got this, the Ducati Panigale V2, formerly known as the Panigale 959. This V2 keeps that same 955 V-twin, gives it a little bit of a facelift with the front end here to copy the V4 style front end. But the big change for this bike is the electronics. It's exactly the same as the V4. Now, if you saw my review, first ride review of this bike in Jerez, You'll know I like it. It's a really fun, easy bike to ride around a racetrack, go quickly on. But at 16.5, I wondered, and I say so in the video, I wondered, you know, there's other Japanese bikes that can offer very similar, if not better, performance for similar amounts of money. Now, it wasn't until I got home that I uh, went on the Google and took a closer look as to exactly what 16.5 will get you in the sport bike world. And it, it hit me pretty pretty quickly when I did some searching. For 16.5, you can also get this, the base version of the Honda CBR1000RR. Only two R's, not the three R version that's also coming here. Honda US says this, the one with two R's, is the base version, and we're only gonna get the triple R in the uh, special SP trim. But that's besides the point. So, for 16.5, I thought, wow, Ducati Panigale V2, Honda CBR 1000 RR, which one gives you better bang for the buck? Both bikes have an electronic suite. Obviously the Honda is a four cylinder 1000cc bike. So here's some numbers for you. That Ducati weighs about 440 odd pounds. On our dyno we put out 136 horsepower. <laughs> The Honda is about 428 pounds, so it's lighter than the Ducati, and it put out 149 horsepower, so lighter and more power. Now here's the kicker. If you look at the dyno chart for the Honda, you'll see that the revs climb to 10.5 or so, and then it flatlines up to its 13.5 red line. So clearly that's a ECU tuning thing to meet EPA requirements, as these bikes have to do. But that also means there's a 3,000 RPM window up top that it's just giving away power because it has to meet EPA requirements. So that 149 horsepower uh, mark is kind of a BS figure because it can really do more than that. But as this bike sits right now, we're playing with 150 horsepower, 428 pounds, full electronic suite, and uh, what we're here today at Chuck Walla Valley Raceway to do is to see, well, 16.5, Honda CBR, Ducati Panigale V2. Numbers are one thing. How they are actually like to ride is really what's important here. So we're at Chuck to ride these two bikes around. I'll come back later and tell you how they do. day of riding both of these bikes on the racetrack. Let's talk about what 16.5 gets you in both the Ducati Panigale V2 and the Honda CBR 
1000RR starting the Ducati. Like I mentioned in the first ride video I did a few weeks back, it's just an easy motorcycle to ride. Um, got a little bit less power and a little bit more weight than the Honda does, which you would think is a deficit. But when you're out there just riding around at a track day, it's that weight difference just goes away. I mean, the weight feels really well balanced on the Ducati. The lack of power compared to the Honda, it still makes 136 horse. So, I mean, it still goes pretty darn good. And with the electronics package, you just feel even more confident to whack that throttle on earlier and earlier, knowing that the TC is gonna save your butt. I started the day on TC level four on this Ducati and kind of felt it kicking in a little bit more often than I would have liked. Kicked it down to one, and coming out a lot of these turns, I could whack the throttle open, feel the tire squirming as it's driving out of a corner, but I could also see the TC light coming on telling me like, okay, I'm not gonna spit you off to the moon. So that's nice to know too. Uh, with the Honda, obviously you've got more power and lighter weight. Now the more power thing is a good and bad. Uh, with the power mode set to one, the most aggressive power mapping, I actually, it was really aggressive and really hard to ride the Honda in that power mode. Every little bump when you're on the throttle, even neutral throttle, every little bump just gets the bike upset because it's like hitting a bump and then wanting to deliver power when you don't want it to. So I actually uh, put it into power mode too, which softens the power a little bit, uh, the initial onset of the power delivery and found it way better uh, for drivability reasons and um, just easier to ride. Now, like I said earlier, the weight difference between the two, it's not that great, but still the Honda is in the 426, 428 range. Ducati is 441, so not a huge discrepancy. And when you're actually out there riding the bikes, you know, it's really hard to tell that small of a weight difference. The bigger thing you notice on the Honda is just more power. And yeah, it's 149 compared to 136. Doesn't seem like a whole lot, but the torque values the Honda makes a lot more than the Ducati, and you feel that when you drive out of a corner. You feel that sudden rush as you're just trying to drive out and accelerate. You feel that if you're in the right gear. The Honda is geared pretty tall, the Ducati is geared pretty short, so you're having to shift a lot, at least at this track, Chuck Walla Valley Raceway. You're shifting a lot on the Ducati to keep it in that meaty part of the power band. You're not shifting as much on the Honda, which is good because there is no auto blip or no quick shifter. It's a completely manual transmission like the good old days. On a big bike like this, at a racetrack like this where you're only using about two or three gears, not a big deal. On the Ducati, I'm shifting a lot more often using about three or four gears sometimes. And so there's a lot of shifting going on. And with the auto blip on the Ducati, it's, it's a godsend, really. Uh, so much less stress on the mind when you're doing all those shifts, you just bang, bang, bang up, bang, bang, bang down, and the bike takes care of the rest. So at a racetrack, you tend to set lap times, and though we didn't do it this time, you kind of want to know which one you're going to be faster on, right? And I think over the course of one lap, I could do a better lap time on the Honda. Now, stick me out there over the course of a race that's, what I don't know, six, eight, 10, 20 laps long, that Ducati is going to be more consistent throughout, which would give me a better overall time in the scheme of things. So it's a toss up. Suspension wise, both bikes have the Showa BPF fork, um, a Zarki uh, shock on the Ducati, another Showa uh, shock on the Honda. Truckwalla has gotten kind of bumpy since I've last been here apparently. Um, both suspensions were okay handling the bumps. We can't forget the fact that these are both also street legal sport bikes. And we did take these on the street did a quick canyon blast, rode some freeway miles, and got a little bit of street time with them. I'll be honest, personally, a sport bike on the street is not my cup of tea. Uh, there's a lot better bikes that are way more comfortable for doing street canyon type rides and stuff like that. Sport bikes are more and more geared towards the racetrack, which is why this is such a track focused test. But since we did go on the street, here's a quick couple of impressions from our street ride as well. First and foremost, all the things I love about the Ducati, just how easy it is to ride. Everything holds true on the street, but I would not choose this Ducati as, a, as my street bike for one simple reason. It is so hot. 
that rear exhaust routing right underneath your butt is so hot. And if you've read or heard or watched any of our past reviews of Ducati V-Twins in the past, I don't know, five to 10 years, it's something we harp on all the time. These Ducatis are hot and they roast your legs. And we rode these bikes on a cold day and it still was hot and uncomfortable. The Honda, meanwhile, for a street bike, it's a gem. Like everything just works. There's no muss, there's no fuss. Like, it's just so easy to ride as a street bike. When you up the ante on the racetrack, the differences pop out, but even still, for 16.5, you're getting two great track-focused motorcycles. Uh, the question then becomes, what's your, what's your flavor? Do you want something aggressive looking, part of the Ducati family? Do you want to be part of that tribe? Uh, or do you want to have, you know, something like the Honda that just works? Everything makes sense, everything is simple, uh, but the electronics package on this Honda isn't quite up to snuff as the one on the Ducati. The TC comes on, I had it in level one. It came on even earlier than I would have preferred, uh, but I'm too chicken to turn it off entirely. When the TC kicks in on the Ducati, even in level one, you can feel it kicking in, but you don't feel so hampered by its activation. And that's, a, that's kind of what you want in a TC system, unless you're brave enough to turn it off and just let your right hand do all the talking. I am not. Uh, so that's the quick impressions of both the Ducati Panigale V2 and the Honda CBR1000RR on the racetrack. $16,500 will get you either one of these. And now the question becomes, which bike would I pick? Well, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a cop out here with my answer. Um, kind of depends what you're going for. Me personally, I feel like there's so much untapped potential with this Honda because like I said earlier, that Dynograph just goes flat line from 10.5 to its red line at like 13.5. So there's way more potential to untap in that 3000 RPM range. We could upgrade the suspension. We could put a quick shifter on here. We could, we could do so much, which would probably then get you this new triple R SP, but I'm getting beside myself here. Uh, so me personally, I, I might pick the Honda in so much that I want to untap its potential. But if you don't want to futz with anything, you just want to ride track focused motorcycle with the latest and greatest electronics and all the doodads that will help save your butt if something does go wrong. The Panigale V2 is such an easy bike to ride quickly on a racetrack. You do have to work harder to ride the Honda quickly. It's just more consistent, this Ducati. And so, yeah, it kind of depends on what your flavor is. Um, like I said, me personally, I want to untap the Honda's potential. But if you don't care about that stuff, and you just want to ride a bike at a racetrack and then pack it up and go home, this Ducati's really good too. It's a bit of a cop out of an answer, but that's how cool top end sport bikes are these days is there's even within the sport bike realm, there's something to suit your cup of tea. So that's what I think about the Honda CBR 1000 RR, the Ducati Panigale V2. So one last thing before we go, a quick shout out and a huge thank you to Pirelli for providing us the uh, Super Corsa TD track day tires for both of these bikes. If you haven't tried them, they are the bee's knees. They are awesome. No tire warmers. You do, I don't know, half a lap, maybe a whole lap and they're up to temperature and you can go rail on them. Got tons of grip. Never once had a moment that scared me on these things. I freaking love the Super Corsa TD tires. They are very uh, wide ranging tire. I can't rave enough about them. They're available in most popular sport bike sizes. Um, yeah, they're just great tires. So thanks once again to Pirelli for the Super Corsa TDs. Be sure to go to motorcycle.com, read my written review there. Uh, if you like this video, like, subscribe, write something nice in the comments. Uh, if you didn't like this video, write something mean in the comments. You probably wouldn't be the first one to do so. Uh, and that's it. We'll see you next time. Ciao, 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 ciao. Sayonara.